Did you meet Shane Taylor in there? No. If, if you've not seen Shane Taylor's story, it's very rare I listen to my own podcast after they filmed, but I did listen to Shane Taylor's Knife Maniac's Redemption. Man, that's one of the craziest. He didn't just go out with a knife, he had the kitchen set wrapped around him. I'll put it in the description box if you want to watch it. Right, uh, what happened with... See, this was the start of me changing. This is what saved my life from, from that that type of lifestyle, what we've just spoke about, uh, Sean. Um, I go to the library. I mean, I'm not a stupid kid. I could read. I'm, I'm doing all right, do you know what I mean? So I go to the library. I thought, fuck it, I'll get a book. Starts looking at these books and I... And, uh, opens his book. I see him at, like reading from criminals and all that stuff. I grabs it and I just put my thumbs in it and opened it. And it, it was Shane. And I was like, eh, so I fucking know him. Going back in time means I took a lad to fight Shane's cousin. And Shane was there. And uh, I was, my mate was getting beat. Like he wasn't winning the fight and I was half tempted to join in. I was getting closer and closer and he just whipped this fucking knife out. And I mean, I had knives pulled out on me. I had all that stuff done. But this guy, I just look in his eye where he went. And I remember like yesterday, he went to me, if you join in, I will fucking kill you stone dead. And he looked at me, he went, listen, I'll stick this right in your neck, I'll kill you. And I looked at him and I thought, he definitely will him like. I just knew. I've had people pull knives out and go, ah, and you sort of know. It's got goosebumps from you telling me that one. He, he looked at me and I knew he would have killed me him. So I was like, fucking hell. So I went, look, I'm splitting up. He went, gone on. So I split it up. That was it. I started seeing him dotting around South Bank. As youth, as us youth, youth lads, 14, 15, 16 year old, we used to do a lot of bad shit. We used to beat smack heads up, do all that shite, like pathetic shite. And we used to see Shane dotting about. Well, I remember one of my mates going, here. And he, Shane was just stood in his middle road staring at us all. And he's a couple of years older than us and he went, here mate, who's he looking at him there, Venna? And I went, fuck, leave him alone. I said, something wrong with him, leave him alone. And he fucked off. Anyway, gets his book. His address was in it. I write to him. Do you remember me and all that? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. F comes in to see me. And this guy who sat at my table on this visit wasn't the guy who I remember this killer in his eyes and this this man would kill. And it was this guy who was just big, loving, Christian man. And I went, do you remember me? He went, yeah, of course I do. He went, how are you doing? And I told him the story about what I just told you. And he was like, yeah. He said, Paul, do you know one of them days when, when I used to stand and stare at people there? He said, I used to have a roll of kitchen knives all around my waist. He said, so if you were to come, I'd have had two knives. And he said, and trust me, Paul, I would have killed you. He said, I'd have definitely killed one or two of you. And I was like, yeah, no, I've seen it in your eyes. I definitely knew that. Anyway, I built a relationship up with him. <laughs> he come to visit me every week. He wrote to me every week, sent me money in. I built a, a very healthy relationship with him. And uh, this guy was amazing. He blew my, he blew my mind. And um, it was a start of something great for me because I, I started becoming up minded about Jesus, about God. I started to be open-minded about a higher power, Sean. I didn't feel like anything would save me. And I, I just thought, this man could only be saved by God because he was a fucking killer. Out and out killer. And like you said, Sean, his, his story, his fuck, he was top six deadliest prisoners. He was in the top six, he was in a prison inside a prison inside a prison. After we filmed it, while well, I'm on the way from home, he was like, he's dangerous, him. For him to say that. <laughs> he was dangerous, mate. And I I know this guy now, like 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 the back of my hand is my brother. And he, and I've heard more stories, the way he thought, how obsessive he was uh, uh, about certain things. And I thought, he is a fucking absolute lunatic. And the only way he was... Um, I don't believe anything could have changed him. Only something that is it can't be explained. And uh, he told me about God. And he spoke about God. Never battered on about me about it. I've had people talk about God to me before and I thought, my God, shut up, Bawa Basha. Can't be done with you here. When he spoke about God to me, Sean, something changed. Something changed in my heart and my, in my head. And I just thought, you know what? There's a possibility he's telling the truth here. So I've done a bit of, bit of soul searching, a bit of a bit of praying, a bit. Of, I don't know what I've done. When I come out of prison, I become open-minded about it massively. And I started thinking about it a lot. I stayed in touch with Shane. I've done a lot, of, a lot of meeting up with him, a lot of conventions, a lot of talking with him. Uh, shout out to Shane. and Massive shout out to Shane. If you're watching this, viewers, please put in the comments if you'd like to see Shane come back on and do a part two. Yeah, be great. Yeah. So I started getting a... a, a, a I built this brotherhood with Shane where he was a... 
he become like my higher power because all I wanted to hear about was how he changed and his story and like like how do you know what I mean? Because I was blown away. Because Sean, trust me, you met him with this nice care and look in his face. If you'd have known him when I knew him, he was a fucking maniac. Have you got any other stories from when he was back then? <laughs> no, no, like I, I like I knew I, I didn't really know of him. I just remember him from then, and I just knew it never left me. And there's a reason why it never left me, Sean, because this day and age where he would come into my life like that, and that never left me, Sean. I thought, why did why did I remember that? Because that man actually meant what he said, and I'd never seen anyone like that. I'd already if someone said I'll kill you, I I it just got me mad, and I wanted to attack. Where when he said it, I fucking believed him. Like, and I'd never felt that way, do you know, ever in my life. I just thought, he definitely will him, like. Because he went into a psychosis when he was stabbing people, didn't he? Yeah, he blacked out. The way out he described like it on that podcast. I, 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 I know you won't mind me saying this, Shane, but he's told me stories, like, when he was in that psychosis mind, when he was in that maniac state, he would watch, what's the film? Is it Casino? No, when he's stabbing him in the back of the car. Oh, yeah. He, he used to watch that over and over again. And it, but bear in mind, he knew the feeling. With that suction because he'd do it and he said I, and it would this buzz he said it was like a drug to me and I thought fuck I used to think bloody hell shame man you are fucking I thought good job God, God saved you mate because you are a fucking lunatic mate but he's my he's my lunatic now he's, <laughs> he's my best mate he's, you know, he's my brother and I, I, I love him no matter what and a shame if you're watching this mate he'll always be my brother and I love you a bit mate yeah, but he, great, he, great he saved my life mate like that that moment in time, my life changed, Sean. Like my life went from being on being on this road to like po possibly death or back into jail to like, you know what? Walking in the gym, leaving my ego at the door, leaving my pride at the door, not walking in this gym to be the hardest man in there and learning a tough lesson and becoming a professional athlete within a month. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Strength of mind right there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well done. During the prison, then, did you bump into anyone else that was like a big name in the crime world? No, I bumped into one man aware who was similar to me, probably the only kid. When we were growing up, he was the only name who probably, probably would have beat me in a fight. I had a lot of feel around the guy. Would have fought him, no matter what. I would have met him, I would have fought him, no matter what. Uh, he was the only man who I thought was probably the capability of beating me. Whether he felt the same or not, probably not. Might have, I don't know. There was a lot of hype around me and him, around this guy. And uh, he came into prison when I was in prison. Bear in mind, when he came to prison, I was, I don't want to say it, but I was probably the hardest man in the prison. And, and I very much doubt anyone would have lived with me in, in, in a fight with me in the prison. This guy come in, and uh, all my pals were panicking and thinking, shit, what are we going to do with him? What are we going to do? And I was like, don't worry about it. I'll sort it. I'll sort it. I'll speak with him. I'll speak with him. And they were like, no, no, no. Listen, said, what, what if he beats you? And I was like, well, he fucking beats me, don't he? I said, at the end of the day, we'll sort it. And he was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Bear in mind, we were grown men. This stemmed from kids with me and him. No, like 14, 15, 16. I'm the next duffer. I'm the next duffer. I'm the artist. I'm the artist. No, 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 I am. We were fucking grown men when he came into prison. We were like 20, 21, 22, 23s. So he'd come into jail. And he went, are we done with him? I went, I'm all right, mate. Shut my hand. And he went, this between me and you is from being kids. We're both from Borough. There's enough room for both of us in here. We'll look after each other. And for them, we come friends. We come friends. And he, and he, you've probably heard his name, but I, just, I, I don't really want to say it over here without his contact. Yeah, yeah, no worries. But he's, uh, he was probably the only kid who was Andy kid like. So you said jail was easy for you. Did you have any low moments? Yeah, yeah. I never got clean in jail, Sean. I never got clean. I used all the way through my prison. Mm. It was when I got out, I got clean. Right. All the way through prison, I used Subitex, weed, ganja, steroids. I used it all. And it helped me through my jail. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Did that but, maintain the cloud in your head, though? Um, it was different. See, when I was out, I was wild and using. You can't get MCAT and coke and all that through jail. Mm. It was more of a, the relaxance. Yeah. The, the subitex, the fucking take mong, get your monged out, take away the four walls. Mm. That's what I, that's what I done through my prison. I used most through my prison, but I, it was a different use, a different way of using for me because it was like 
you, you're trapped, aren't you? you, you, you you're, you're limited to what you can do and what you can say and what, what what's going on. So, Jim, bang behind your door, using, take away the four walls. And that's what I've done all the way from my prison. What was your workout routine? I was lifted big, lifted big, big heavy weights, ate a lot of food, ate a lot of porridge. Ate Did you have access to a lot of food? Yeah. Oh, hell of a lot, yeah. Is that through buying it in addition to what it gives yeah. you? Yeah, I got looked after well in jail. I, I, money wasn't an issue. Food wasn't an issue. I, I lived like a fucking king in there, Sean. Our visits? Visits were shit. They were the only thing. See, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I've always been quite an emotional guy, me, Sean. Like, I, 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 I am a good, I've always been a good lad. But the, the, the addiction side of things and all that stuff, what I suffered with, just totally took away my morals and, and changed my personality. So every time I had a visit with my missus and my kids and stuff, or my mum and dad, or my sister, or whoever, I come out away from them meetings, from them visits, with my head, in, my head panned in, because I loved them, and I, and I knew this life wasn't for me. I thought, this jail's not for me, man. What am I doing? But it's one of them things, mate, do you know what I mean? You've got to swallow it and fucking get on with it. Because the visit's like gold, isn't it? But then when you go back to your cell, you're like, fuck. I hated hell. them. I hated them. I fucking hated them. But it had to be done because I still wanted to see them. I didn't Because if imagine they didn't see me all the way from a sentence. I think, oh, they're going to forget about me, what they're up to, what they're doing. Yeah. So I had to see them. It, it was, it was, you had to do other visits. But I fucking hated them. Bye. Yeah. For one after one hour. It was sickening. In that prison then, what was the visitation room like? Did you like just sit at a table and could you like get food from like machines yeah, yeah. and shit? Yeah, the canteen bits, chocolate and milkshakes and coffee. That was the yeah. best bit about it. Yeah, your, yeah. your family and that. <laughs> but it was big comfy chairs. You had to wear a fucking prison uh, shirt, blue and white shirt, which was fucking horrendous. And prison jeans, which were always worn and you never know who's had them on. But yeah. it was one of them things, mate. Do you know what I mean? It was... It, 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 <sighs> I don't know. It was I, 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 like jail. Was it horrendous for me? Mm, not really. But it was a life lesson. Where do we want to go back? No, never. Do you know what I mean? Did you read much? Yeah, yeah. What kind of stuff were you reading? I read a lot of James Patterson. Yeah. I like. Uh, I read a few crime books. Not really many. I only read uh, read one about the craze. I read uh, mainly what's what fictional, whether made up stories. I like them ones, the James Patterson ones. They were brilliant. Yeah. Never read a book since. Never read a book before. Really? But, but I was reading like every It takes day. you out of the cell, doesn't it, if yeah. you go on an adventure in some fucking yeah. novel? It does, yeah. Yeah. All right, so what year did you get out? 